take your Bible this evening, if you would, for our scripture reading. Matthew chapter 26, please. Matthew chapter 26. I'd like us to read together tonight verses 36 through 39, those four verses, and we'll just read them in unison together this evening, and uh, Matthew 26, verses 36 through 39. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the scripture, all of us standing together, and let's read these verses in unison, beginning with verse number 36. Ready? Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane. And saith unto the disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went a little further and fell on his face, and prayed, saying, O my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Now, Father, add your blessing to the reading of our scripture tonight. Lord, we thank you for the music this evening. Thank you for the wonderful testimonies from our ladies and uh, what you did in their heart as the ladies in Mansfield ministered the word of God to them. Lord, we're asking you now to speak to our hearts tonight through your word. Lord, I pray that each of us would uh, focus and give our concentration and our attention to your word this evening, that each of us would be sensitive to the still small voice of the Holy Spirit, that you would help us this evening and minister to us, Lord, that we all might desire to be as close to you as we possibly can. And I pray it in Jesus' name, amen. You pray I'm fighting this respiratory thing, and it's Bob Wallace's fault, but I just thought I'd share that with you. He got it first, and I texted him, and (laughs) the rest is history. So uh, just thought I'd share that with you, brother. And uh, I remember the first time that I noticed my wife, we were both attending the same church, Canton Baptist Temple in Canton, Ohio. And um, I had, sitting beside my good friend, Rod Stuchel, and in the congregation, and then she was up in the choir, and uh, I pointed him out, pointed her out to him, and I uh, said, I'm, we both gra- we've graduated high school, and uh, it's, it's the summertime, and I I remember nudging Rod, and I'm saying, I'm going to date that girl right up there. And he laughed at me. He laughed at me. I said, you watch and see. And it wasn't long. We had a Bible conference out at camp. There was a camp trough that's associated with Canton Baptist Temple. And um, we would have a week-long Bible conference in those days. And uh, you go out, and they had morning services and evening services and two preachers each time. And many people would come out with campers and such and uh, spend the week there and had meals and everything. And it was just a, just a great time. And um, we went out. There. I would just go out there in the evenings after work because I was working. And um, would see my wife. Of course, our families went out. My parents went out. And I remember saying something to my dad and mom that I was going to date this girl. And uh, my dad said, oh, we know her parents. You want us to introduce you? I said, no. (laughs) Remember those days? They just stay stay out of it, Dad. I'll take care of this, all right? And uh, the following, it was the week after the Bible conference, they had a college and career week. And uh, that's where our college and career class at the um, church, those of us who worked, you could just come out after work and you could have dinner and we'd play softball or something and then there was a service. And uh, so I went out there that week and, and uh, boy, Kathy happened to be out there too, and uh, made the, the plan to be able to introduce myself and meet her that week, and did, and sat with her in the services. And then after I found out that after that week of Bible conference, she only had a week at home, and she would be leaving for college. I was not going to college right away, 
And so I, I saw her every night that next week before she went to college, except one night, and that was a night that she said, uh, our family's having a family night. And I remember looking at her and saying, you're having a what? I'd never heard of that before. And said, well, it's a family night where it's just our family. I thought, huh, I know when I'm not wanted, you know, and uh, <laughs> exclude me out of that. Uh, but other than that, saw her every night, and then, of course, she left for college. And I began to, so in those days, I, I would call her on the telephone. Now, in those days, you didn't have cell phones. And, uh, and, and, you know, long distance wasn't even, uh, it, it was long distance, and it was, you paid for the long distance. And uh, I called a lot during September. I didn't realize how much I called <laughs> until the first week of October when my dad called the name. My, my dad, when he just called Stan, I, I, I was okay. But, boy, when he said Stanley Bruce, you ever use both names? You, you knew there was trouble on the horizon. And, and now, grad, I'm, I'm out of high school. I had my, uh, we had a finished lower level in our house, and I had a room down there. I made my base, you know, in the basement there, made my own bedroom. So I tried my own place down there, kind of. And boy, he came down, and he laid a telephone bill down that was over $300. And uh, that, that's a lot of money today. That was a lot of money in 1977 to a, uh, to a, uh, a uh, guy just out of uh, high school, and uh, and he and he informed me I'd be paying that bill off. So later on, uh, towards the end of October, made plans. Then after uh, learning how to write letters instead of call, but uh, we uh, decided I would drive down to South Carolina where she was in college and see her. And I had a. 1969 Volkswagen is what I drove and um, decided I'd try to make that trip. Got up at 3.30 in the morning and I think I left at 4 a.m. for South Carolina. I had to get in in time. There was some kind of a uh, what they called an artist series uh, that night that I was supposed to go to. So I had to know I had to get in in time for that. I did not know what an artist series was at that time. I'm familiar with the World Series and <laughs> things like that and a, a bowling series, but I didn't know what artist series was. And so um, get up and drive 12 hours. Now, most of you know, by the way, I didn't like driving any more then than I do now, even though I was younger. I, I don't like, I don't care to drive long distances. Um, I drive, I'm one of those people who drives about an hour and I'm ready to go to sleep. I just get sleepy when I drive. And so... Uh, but drove down there, got to the college, sat through a, I found out an artist series is like an opera. It was a German opera. They, they were singing another language. And I'm sitting there, Brother Taylor, it's, you know, 8 o'clock at night. I've been up since 3.30 in the morning, drove 12 hours, and I'm listening to people singing a language. I don't know what they're saying. You say, why would you do that? Why would, you, why would you have a phone bill like that? Why would you drive 12 hours? Why would you sit in a place like that and hear people sing in another language? You know why? There was somebody I wanted to be with. That's why. There was somebody I wanted to be close to. Didn't matter what was going on. It was who I was with. That's what made the difference. And I wanted to be with her. Now hold your, in, in, in where you read tonight, in Matthew 26, Jesus goes to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. This is before, right before the betrayal where Judas will come and plant the, che the kiss on his cheek. And Jesus brought his disciples, 11 of them, okay? And he says, sit here while I go and pray yonder. And so eight of them stay there, but he takes three with him. He took him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Who is that? James and John, the sons of thunder, okay? So he takes Peter, James, and John, and he goes, uh, begins to be uh, sorrowful and very heavy. So he has 11 of them, and he says, eight of you stay here. He goes, he goes to walk away, and he says, no, wait a minute. Peter, James, and John, you come with me. And he went a little farther with those three. 
And that was always the case. They were kind of, they were kind of the inner circle. They, they, were, they were closer to Jesus than the other eight were. And, and so they got to go a little further in the garden with Jesus than what the other disciples did. Now, they only got so far, and then Jesus went the rest of the way by himself and prayed. But, but they, they were closer than the other eight were. You know, it, it, it's a matter of being with him. I want you to look at Mark chapter 3. Would you look there? Just turn to your right a few pages, hopefully, to the Gospel of Mark right after Matthew. This is when Jesus called his disciples. He chose 12, okay? He went up into a mountain in Mark 3 and verse 13. And he called unto them whom he would, and they came unto him. And notice he ordained twelve. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach. And a lot of times we, we kind of miss that first part and we say, well, he ordained twelve to send them out to preach. But there was something he did with those twelve before he sent them out to preach. He ordained twelve that they might be with him and that he would send them forth to preach. Don't miss the first part. The very first thing he ordained them to be was to be with him. That, that, don't overlook that. Listen, you, you, don't, you cannot take Christ out of Christianity. Christ isn't keeping... Listen, Christianity is not just keeping a list of rules. Christianity isn't just doing ritual things. Christianity isn't just, I go to church on Sunday. Christianity is Jesus Christ. You can't separate Christianity from Christ. So uh, make sure you understand. 2 Peter 3.18, grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's Christianity, growing to know Christ, growing to be closer to Him, growing to, growing to be part of that inner circle that, that gets to be as close to Christ as you want to be. Now, I want you to, just tonight, briefly, and I won't be long, but I want to I help you grow in your relationship to Christ. Here's where we start. Look at John chapter 12, please. The Gospel of John chapter 12. Notice what Jesus says in John 12 in verse number 26. If you're there, you say amen. John 12, verse 26. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also... What's the next two words, church? My servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. My servant. Can I say number one? The, the first relationship that you can have with Christ is you can be his servant. You can be his servant. Eighty-two times in the New Testament... A believer is referred to as a servant, or someone refers to themselves as a servant of Jesus Christ. Nobody's saved to sit. Nobody is saved to soak. Okay? We're saved to serve Jesus Christ. Servant in, in our English Bible, there's, there's two different words that are used in the Greek language for servant. Uh, one is doulos, which is a bond slave, a slave, if you will. And the other is diakonos, which is the word we get our word deacon from. And, and they're both used and both translated as the word servant in the New Testament. And that's accurate because it's a, it denotes that, that we are no longer at our disposal. We're no longer to do what we want. We've been purchased to do what the master wants. We've been bought. It's exactly what it means. And by the way, have we been bought? Yes, we've been bought with a price. And the price was the blood of Jesus Christ. Uh, we are not our own, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. We've been bought with the precious blood of Christ. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Not my own anymore. You're not your own anymore. We are now servants of Jesus Christ. And a servant's business is to do as he's told to do. Is to do whatever the master wants him to do. Christian therefore, uh, Christian service therefore, is simply living out 
my servant relationship with Jesus Christ. He's the master. If he's the master, I'm the servant. I'm the slave. Whatever you say, is that, that's what I'll do. And that service is for a lifetime. You don't just serve, well, I get my 20 years in. Get my 30 years in. No, you serve for a lifetime. You serve the Lord all the days of your life. I'm happy in the service of the king. I'm happy, oh so happy. Oh, that's just the chorus the choir opens the service with. No, that, that's, the, that's, that's the theme of our life. You're happy serving the Lord. If, you're, if you tend, listen, when you, tend, when you feel yourself getting a little disgruntled or a little unhappy, you ought to stop and think, how am I serving God? How am I serving others? Maybe I need to get busy doing something for the Lord and doing something for others. And so everybody, if you're saved and you're a child of God, you ought to be serving God. Notice what Jesus said in verse 26. He said, if any man serve me, him will my father honor. Would you like to be honored by God? Then serve Jesus Christ. Serve him with the life he's given you. That's why I believe everybody who's saved ought to belong to a New Testament Baptist church and they ought to serve the Lord in the church. Everybody ought to have something they're doing for God. Hey, be an usher. Greet people at the back of the auditorium. Help in the nursery. Work in a children's church. Help on the bus route. Sing in the choir. Play an instrument. Do something for God in the church. Why? You're not serving the church. You're not serving the people. You are serving Jesus Christ. You're a servant. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. It's a shame and it's a tragedy. So many churches have abandoned ministries because they can't find people to serve. It's tragic. We need servants. I want to hear, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. I thank God that when I got saved and, and that I was in the kind of a church and, and I was, my, my, my parents, obviously, I was saved as a boy. My parents got me under the kind of preaching that, that said, you're to serve Jesus Christ. Understand, I'm, uh, when, when we went to Canton Baptist Temple, you know, we had Tuesday night visitation in those days. And we go to Tuesday night visitation, and Wednesday night is the midweek service. And Thursday night, I went to Bible discussion. It was a, it, I went when I, before I was supposed to go, I guess. It was for college and career age type people. And I went as a junior in high school, and, and that was from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. every Thursday night. And uh, amazing things that in the Bible I learned uh, sitting in that Bible discussion on Thursday nights where sometimes there'd be 100 people there. And uh, just college age kids. And uh, just an amazing thing. And then, and then you had Sunday morning and Sunday night. And then sometimes Sunday afternoon there was a detention home uh, that they went and did preaching in. And I attended that and, 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 and just, just stayed busy. Why? I wanted to serve God. Uh, when they had the count, I talked about Camp Choff. I became a counselor there for two summers in between Bible college years. And, and, and I just wanted to serve God. Man, there's something in my heart that I mean, I'm saved and there was something I, I want to do something for God with my life. And if you're saved, there ought to be something inside of you and God ought to be so working inside of you to say, man, I, I can't just sit here. I've got to do something for God. I want to serve Him with my life. Be a servant for Jesus Christ. Now I want you to look at John 13. Would you please? John chapter 13. But if you desire to be closer, there's another step you can take. There's another position you can take that will bring you closer to Christ. And in John 13, and notice with me verse number 35, Jesus says this, By this shall all men know that ye are, what's the next two words, church? My disciples, if ye have love one to another. Now, Jesus doesn't say, you're my servants. He says, you're my disciples. It doesn't mean you're not a servant, but it means you're adding uh, something more than a servant, and that is you're going to be a disciple. A disciple is a learner where, where Christ is the teacher. And as a, as a servant, you follow and you serve Christ, but as a disciple, you desire to be like Christ. I think we read this morning the verse where where the, the disciple will be as his teacher. He's going to be as his master. 
That was a whole idea of someone who said, I'd like to be your disciple. If a rabbi was the teacher and them said, I want to be your disciple, they followed him everywhere. That's why the 12 disciples went with Jesus everywhere he went. That's how it worked in those days. And you went with them everywhere because you wanted to be like them. You weren't just listening to a lecture in a classroom. You were following them in everyday life. And you were, you were seeing how they reacted and responded and how they handled every situation so you could be like that. You were learning to be like the Master. It means you're going to have to uh, build your faith and you're going to battle the flesh and battle the enemies of Christ. The songwriter said, Earthly pleasures vainly call me, I would be like Jesus. Nothing worldly shall enthrall me, I would be like Jesus. Be like Jesus, this my song, in the home and in the throng. Be like Jesus all day long, I would be like Jesus. Look with me over in, before the Gospel of John to your left, Luke chapter 14. What's involved with this disciple being a disciple of Jesus Christ? Being a learner of His? Drawing a little closer to Him than just being a servant? I want to be a servant, but I want to be a disciple. I want to be a little closer. Notice what Jesus said, verse number 26 of, John 4, of uh, Luke 14. If any man come to me and hate not father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters, yea, his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Verse number 33, So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. You understand, there's some, there's some denial, there's some dying that has to take place. In other words, it's, it's no longer, as you, as you begin to desire to be like Christ, you have to realize, then I can't be like myself. I can't be what I, what I be all you want to be. That may be good for the army, but it's not good for the Christian army. You know what the Christian army is? Be all he wants me to be. I want to be like he is. One day we'll be like him, we'll see him as he is, and we'll be like him, but we're to be being conformed to his image every single day. And that means I've got to deny myself. I have to, not, not, not my will, but thine be done. I have, to, I have to say, Lord, I want my desires to be your desires. I want my reactions, my response to be your responses. I want others to see Christ in me. You see, the, the, the disciple, the root is disciplined one. You're going to have to have discipline in your life. Discipline, discipline doesn't make you spiritual, but discipline will make spirituality available to you. If you're not disciplined to get up in the morning when the alarm goes off, and spend time with God, and spend time in His Word, and spend time in prayer. My friend, if you're not disciplined enough that when the, it's Sunday morning you come to church, and when it's Sunday night you come to church, and when it's Wednesday night you come to church, if you're not disciplined enough to do that, you're never going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. You're never going to know what it is to be close to Jesus. It's discipline. You have to be a disciplined one. Notice what Jesus said in John chapter 8 and verse number 31. John 8, verse number 31. Then said Jesus, verse 31, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. Okay, they're believers. But what did Jesus say to them? If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Oh, you're believers, but if you want to be a disciple, you better continue in the Word. You better continue to study my Word. You better continue to read my Word. You better continue to memorize my Word. Continue to meditate in my Word. Let these words abide in you, and you abide in my words. You dwell with them, and they'll dwell with you. And you know what will happen? Verse 32, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. 
Free from what? Free from your own lust. Free from your own desires. Free from what your own will is. Free to do what God wants you to do. The battle is always what God wants compared to what we want. That's always the battle. It's the battle. Most of the battles with ourselves. Oh, we blame the devil sometimes, but the biggest person you have trouble with is you, my friend. It's the person we're, we're looking at every day in the mirror. Amen. Say, there's the person I got the most trouble with. Most of us, frankly, Satan doesn't have to work too hard on. And so we have to battle that, and we have to deny ourselves and get into the Word of God and, and be a disciple of Jesus Christ. If you neglect the Bible... If you won't have the discipline to be in the Word of God and to not just, hey, I, I'm going to say continuing the Word is not just reading the Word, though it includes reading the Word. But the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. How much? Some of you would do a great, it would be a great day in your life when you got off your Bible reading schedule and making sure you got so many chapters in every day so you can finish your Bible year and you just spent time studying the Bible. And, and let God enrich your spirit through the study of His Word. And you, you, you get a little beyond just skimming over the top all the time. Reading. And you get to, to, to go down and, and search some of the hidden treasures of the Word of God. Study to show yourself meditate in the Word of God. That's where the success is, according to Joshua chapter 1 and Psalm chapter 1. So, disciples, disciples, become a disciple of Christ. Learn of Him, and you will learn of Him in His Word. How do you, how do you get to follow Christ in our day? We don't have him physically here to follow him around and watch him react to situations and handle people and, and talk to folks. and we, we don't have that example to follow. How do we know that? We have to follow him in God's word. You can, you can get up every morning and walk with Jesus. We can get up every day and spend time following him around and learning of him. Learn of me. Be a disciple of Jesus Christ. It'll never happen if you're half-hearted about it. You have to be wholehearted. You can be close. So we can be servants. We can be closer and become disciples. But I want you to look at John 15 with me, will you please? John chapter 15. John 15. Notice with me verse number 14, would you please? John 15, verse number 14. Where Jesus said this, Ye are, what's the next two words, church? My friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Now friend, my friends, listen, that's a word that we've come to use way too flippantly in our society. The, don't, you know, don't go by how many people say they're your friend on Facebook. Okay? That's not your friends, okay? Sorry to burst, your, sorry to pop your bubble there. But uh, it's not buddies. It's not, it's not, when Jesus says you're my friends, it's not uh, bringing Jesus down to our level. It's us rising to his level. It's us going to be a friend. A servant follows him, a disciple learns and wants to be like him, but a friend obeys him and desires to be with him. That's a friend. When you have a friend, you desire to be with him. You notice what he said? Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you. Now, what it's not saying is this. Listen carefully. It doesn't mean that obedience makes you his friend. Like you're earning his friendship. What he's saying is, because you're my friend... You obey whatsoever I tell you to do. The difference is I am his friend, I do whatever he says. The wish of a friend is a royal command. A friend of Jesus, in fact, does not have to have a command. They just have to know it's what the master wants. That's a friend. There was, uh, Danny's not wearing it tonight. I think it was you, wasn't it? 
You're the one who told Ron Moreland you like the tie he had on? Dan just said, I like that tie you got on, man. That's really sharp. That night, Ron Moreland came back and gave a tie to Danny that he was wearing that Danny liked. You know what that is? That's a friend who somebody just said, I think he likes this. It's his. See, that's a friend. He didn't become his friend because he gave him a tie. He gave him a tie because he's his friend. You don't become a friend because you're obeying Jesus. You're obeying Jesus because you are his friend. That that's, that's what a friend does. You're not, you're not a friend if you're living in self-will and disobedience to the Lord. Then you'll never be his friend. Look at, look at uh, in, in chapter 14 of John verse 21 look there with me please John 14 21 he that hath my commandments and keepeth him he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and I will love him and will manifest myself to him verse 23 Jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he'll keep my words See, I don't keep my words to love him. I love him, therefore I keep his words. And my Father will love him. We will come unto him and make our abode with him. So as God says, I'll just be at home with those who keep my commandments. I'll be at home with those who obey me. And, and desire, uh, listen, those who want to be his friend, they never, when someone says you ought to do this or the Lord would want you to do this, they don't say, well, give me chapter and verse for that. See? It's not a matter of, well, tell me where the Lord said, I can't do that. No, 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 no. If a friend, if I know that that's what the Lord would want, if he just even hints at it, I want to do it. I want to please him. I want to obey him. I want to keep his commandments. And so I want to, I want to do, listen, a friend, notice in, in John 15 again, verse 14, he said, you do whatsoever I command you. Whatever he says, I do. If I want to be his friend. If I am his friend, whatever he says, I do. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, every creature. Done. Hmm? Yes, sir. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Yes, sir. It will be done. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Yes, sir. It will be done. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Yes, sir. It will be done. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse. Yes, sir. It will be done. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing. Yes, sir. It will be done. Love not the world, neither things are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. Yes, sir. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Yes, sir. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for it. Yes, sir. Everybody who's saved, everybody who's been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, listen, they ought to serve Jesus Christ. Then there ought to be those who, who, who desire more and say, I, I desire to be like the Savior. I desire to be like Jesus. I, I want to be His disciple. I want to follow Him and I want to be like Him. But then there may be some who would say, listen, I, I, I'm glad to be a servant and I'm glad to be His disciple, but I sure would like to be His friend like to do whatever, whatever it is, I'll do it. I want to be his friend. I just want to be with him. I just enjoy being with him. I want you to get James chapter 2, and we'll be finished. James chapter 2. You know, in... Most of you are familiar with the story of Abraham and Isaac. God told Abraham that he was going to take his son, his only son Isaac, 
and go up to Mount Moriah and, and sacrifice him there before God. Now, most of you know that was the promised son. That's the son that he had waited for. That was the miraculous son because Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 90. You think that's odd? And easy? It was odd in any day, no matter what day it was. And, and it was a miraculous thing. And God had promised him, he said, you look at the stars, see how the stars up there? He said, uh, your seed will be more than the stars you can count in heaven. Or the sand, as he looked about in the sand there, and he said, you, 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 your seed will be more than the grains of sand. And now he says, take your son. And as far as I know in the scripture, God never asked anyone else to do what he told Abraham to do. To go sacrifice your son. You know the story, he had his knife up in the air, he was ready to do exactly what God said to do when he had the angel of the Lord stop him. And he didn't have to do that. But he said, now I know that you're willing to do it. Abraham, willing to do whatsoever he commanded him to do. Whatever it is. Now, you in James chapter 2? Look with me, would you please, at verse number 23. And the scripture was fulfilled which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called, what? The friend of God. Who was the friend of God? Abraham. Because he said, whatever it is, God, I'll do it. That's why God called him his friend. Because he'll do whatever I ask him to do. Now, the question is, how close are you? Are you, are you satisfied being a servant? Not a bad thing. Everybody ought to be one if you're saved. But are you satisfied with being that distance from Christ? Or would you like to say, I'd, I'd like to be a disciple? I'd like to move a little closer to Christ and be his disciple and desire to be like him. But then I would challenge you tonight, if you have that desire in your heart, maybe you'd ask God, God, can I be your friend? Could I desire to be with you and whatever you tell me to do, I'll do. It's not, it's not, well, you know, God, tell me what it is first and then let me, let me see if I should, I want to do it or not. No, 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 it's just whatever. Whatever it is, God, I'll do. Will you be his friend? You know, we sing songs, I found a friend in Jesus, he's everything to me, the fairest of 10,000 to my soul. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. See, I found a friend, he's all to me, his love is ever true. Songbook's filled with that. But is it just songs we sing? Or can we really say that he's our friend? That I'm his friend. And that I'll be a friend to him. A servant, disciple, a friend. How close do you want to be? Let's pray, shall we? Father, take the truth here this evening. Thank you, God, for allowing us to have a relationship with you. Lord, you could be a God that is afar off if you wanted to be. We could, we could be here cowering in fear, trembling at anything you would do or say, but you desire that we draw nigh to you so you can draw nigh to us. What a privilege. What an honor. And Lord, tonight we've seen how we can be as close to you as we desire to be. And tonight I pray that everyone here that is saved would have the desire to be a servant of Christ. That they say, you know, I need to be doing something for Christ. He has done so much for me. He's bought me. He's purchased me with his blood. I belong to him. I ought to serve him with my life. And then those in this room who are serving him, and they are a servant, ought to say, I need to be a disciple. I need to discipline in my life. I need to die to self. I need to desire the things of God. I want to be like Christ. I'll discipline myself to be in his word and to spend time in prayer and to follow him and to 
to, to be like him. And Lord, I pray there'll be folks tonight who would say, but I want to be his friend. Because I'll be his friend, whatever he asks me to do, I'll do it. His wish will be my royal command. I'll do whatsoever he commands me to do. I just want to be with him. He's my friend. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. wonder how many believers tonight would say, Preacher, the, the Lord has spoken to my heart. I don't know whether it's to be a servant. I don't know whether to be a disciple. I don't know if it's to be his friend. But you just say, Preacher, the Spirit of God has tugged at my heart tonight. And I do want to be closer to Jesus than I am right now. Pastor, God has dealt with my heart. Please pray for me this evening. Will you slip your hand up, Christian? Say, pray for me tonight. Amen. That's good. You may put them down. In a moment, I'll pray and we'll have our invitation. God has dealt with your heart. Bow the knee to Him. Spend a moment with Him before you go home tonight. Do what God's telling you to do in your heart. If you're here tonight and maybe God's been dealing with your heart, you're saved, you're baptized, but you're not a member at Bible Baptist Church, and maybe God's been dealing with your heart about membership. And you ought to say, you know what? This is what we need to start serving the Lord. This is where we ought to serve. Whatever it is that the Lord's dealt with your heart about, just simply obey Him this evening, would you please? Heavenly Father, thank you for speaking to our hearts. I'm asking you, Lord, that your will will be done in each one of our lives now. These next few minutes as we bow our head, bend our knee, and talk to you. Hear our prayer. Seal our decisions for now and for eternity. May we not just be your servants. May we not just be your disciples. May we be your friends. Have your own way now, Lord, and I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, our pianist will play. As she plays, Bible sing. God has spoken to your heart tonight. Respond to him, please. There is a place of quiet That's right. rest near to the heart of God. A place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, blessed Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet, near to the heart of God, a place where we, our Savior, meet, near to the heart of God. O oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, sent from the heart of God, hold us who wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of full release, near to the heart of God. A place where all is joy and peace, near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, send from the heart of God. Hold us who wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. Heavenly Father, we bow before you in prayer now, and we ask your blessing upon the decisions made this evening. Thank you, Lord, for a wonderful time together in the house of God tonight. Thank you, Lord, for every believer in this place, and thank you so much for folks who make the effort to be in church on Sunday evening. And Lord, thank you most of all for meeting with us tonight, speaking to our hearts. It sure was good to be in church today. 
Lord, it's been a wonderful Lord's Day. We're ready for another week, and we pray that you'll guide us and lead us through the week. Dismiss us now with your care. Make us mindful that you go with us from this place. Lord, I pray we'll be mindful of your presence. and We'll please you in all we do. Help us to draw close to you this week, Lord, and be just as close as we possibly can be. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing It's a Grand Thing to Be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. If you are interested in the Mexico missions trip, head on down uh, to the conference room. And uh, just we'll, we'll just be in there for a few minutes, answer any questions you have, kind of let you know what uh, information you need to know. And uh, any interest at all, just show up down there, and uh, we'll get you, going to get everybody on the same page and know where we're headed, okay? All right, we'll see you downstairs. Brother Bob. It's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus. Anywhere and everywhere I go for. It's a grand thing to be a soldier in this army here below. It's a grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Amen. You are dismissed.